Right, welcome back to the Young Fan Podcast and welcome to my favourite player from every single League One club. This is not the best player at your football club. This is not the best player so far this season at your football club. This is very simply my favourite player. Let me know your favourite player in the comments section down below. I'll be replying and responding to all of your thoughts as per usual. Make it a discussion. Leave a like and subscribe as well if you like the content. You want to see more of this. Maybe you've got some new ideas. Of course, we do the roundups. We do the match reactions. We do the predictions. We do the previews. But if you've got any other interesting ideas, ideas what we could do in the middle of the week before we sort of hit match day or match week should I say let me know what we could do because uh, I'm intrigued to hear your thoughts as I always am let's get into it starting off with Morecambe and I've gone with Carl Stockton this man is a proven goal scorer at this level last season he scored 23 goals and he ultimately did keep Morecambe in the league and I, f- I feel sometimes quite harsh when talking about Morecambe last year and and Carl Stockton I sort of have done it on quite a few episodes actually But he was a pivotal part. He was a huge, huge part in them staying in the division. If it wasn't for him, they probably would be playing League Two football this year. He was somebody that ultimately was was scoring chances that they probably shouldn't be scoring. He was scoring goals at some really crucial moments and in some big games as well. Some question marks maybe on his attitude this season. He wanted to move away in the summer. Looking at where Morecambe are at the moment when looking at the league table, you could maybe see why we believe Fleetwood and Port Vale actually were the two clubs interested in his services. He didn't move away. He stayed at Morecambe. Now, they are struggling. And I think if Morecambe do have any chance of staying in the league, getting Cole Stockton back to the form of last season is probably the best way to go about it. He's prolific in front of goal. When given a chance, he's going to take it. We saw that last year. And, and the reason why I think Morecambe, and my favourite player, is, is Cole Stockton at Morecambe is because of what he did last season. And, of course, in League 2 as well. Huge part of them getting promoted into League 1 in the first place. I'm going to go Cole Stockton from Morecambe. I bet you didn't expect this. I'm not going to go for a fire evacuation procedure live on the podcast. So, for Burton Albion, I've gone with Victor Adebejo. If I pronounce that... Is that a fire alarm? That sounded very much like a fire alarm. Do I evacuate the building? So for Burton Albion, I've gone with Victor Adebejo. If I pronounce that name wrong, I can only apologise. But this player is really standing out in, let's be honest, quite a poor side. Five goals in 10 starts so far this season. Recently scored a brilliant hat-trick against Forest Green Rovers. That could be a huge result come the end of the season when looking at that relegation battle. He is giving Burton a real attacking outlet. And ultimately, for a side who aren't really creating many chances, that could be really, really important. He is that goal-scoring threat, which exactly is what Burton Albion need. He's given potentially Burton and some hope for survival as well, which I imagine they wouldn't mind either. Will it be enough? Will Victor Adjabejo be the man who can keep Burton in the league? We'll have to wait and see. That's who I've gone with as Burton Albion's, or my favourite player at Burton Albion so far. So for Forest Green Rovers, I've gone with Connor Wickham. This is a player with an abundance of experience. 120 Premier League appearances, 101 Championship appearances and 20 total League One appearances so far. So much experience and a great attacking option for Forest Green Rovers. Four goals in five games so far this season. And similar to Burton, he could be the player that could give them that survival hope. He certainly has the experience and the brilliant goal scoring ability. A really good and important goal against Bolton Wanderers recently earned them that one nil victory. Connor Wickham's a player who I think is my favourite at Forest Green Rovers. So for Bristol Rovers, I've gone with Aaron Collins, a real attacking threat for Bristol Rovers and Joey Barton's side, already with 10 goal contributions in 11 games. He has 30 goal contributions in 63 games in a Rovers shirt. It was a crucial part of their promotion back into League One last season, a brilliant League Two campaign. Aaron Collins is the player who I think is my favourite at Bristol Rovers and Joey Barton's side. So MK Dons, I've gone with the centre midfielder, Josh McEachern. He has been injured for the majority of the season, but I feel that that might be the reason they're having a little bit of a slow start. I'm going to be completely honest. I did this research about a week ago. It hasn't got much better for MK Dons, who lost to Bristol Rovers as a recording last night. So maybe I could be slightly off with that statement there, but he is such an influential part of MK Dons, whether they're doing well or doing badly. Last season showed his importance with a great individual and team campaign, only missing two games or season of course he finished third last year and it was at the heart of that midfield and I know his mum so that's important that's really important I know his mum met her a few times um, and uh, she's a lovely woman let's move on so for Wicker Wanderers, I've gone with Sam Vokes, an exceptional number nine, but also somebody with such calibre and experience. Really good to see someone like that in League One. Played at a variety of levels and clubs, Norwich City, Wolves, Burnley and Leeds United. He played a vital role in Wickham's playoff run last season. Of course, couldn't get past Sunderland 
at Wembley in the final. 113 Premier League appearances, 276 Championship appearances and 111 League One total appearances now. Not just does he play league football, but also a Welsh international with 64 Welsh international caps. We saw how Wickham really missed him, I think, when he was injured at the start of the season. He is that focal point. He is that real number nine who they can play to feet also. You know, he's not a bad finisher either. The hold-up play is obviously a huge part of, of what he's all about and how Wickham and Gareth Ainsworth want to play and use him as well. So I've gone with Sam Vokes as my favourite player at Wickham Wanderers. So for my club, Oxford United, I've gone with centre midfielder Cameron Brannigan, such an influential player on and off the ball, steps up on the big moments, on the big occasions. I'll be honest, not many candidates scream and shout at me at the moment, not having a good campaign at all. But Cameron Brannigan... Let's be honest, he is a championship player. He should be playing in the championship. He turned down a move to go to Blackpool in the summer, signed a new long-term deal. How much is he regretting that? We'll find out. Um, he loves the club and we love him. So I think, honestly, he's the only player that does deserve a shout-out at the moment. Cameron Brannigan is my favourite player at the football club. And maybe Marcus McGuire. He's had a good campaign, I'll be honest. So for Chatham Town, I sort of flirted between a couple of options. Alfie May was one. I actually went with Celeb Taylor on loan from West Brom. One of the best loan signings of the summer by any League One club. I truly do believe that. Playing such a huge role at the back for Cheltenham this year. Consistently playing at quite a high level of performance. And his development and potential is just simply quite incredible. Averaging 6.7 clearances per 90. Looking comfortable on the ball. And really, really good when it comes to being press-proof as well. Which in League One, for a centre-back, is very rare. Trust me. That's very, very rare. Uh, he started 10 out of the 11 games so far this year, so clearly highly rated by the management and Wade Elliott at Cheltenham. Only 19 years of age and showing how he could literally go to the very top. Potential is frightening, but very, very promising. I've gone with Taylor, Seneb Taylor from Cheltenham, somebody on loan from West Brom as my player, who I think is my favourite at Cheltenham. So Port Vale have gone with Jack Stevens, a player on loan from Oxford United. Still so confused why we let him go out on loan in the first place. A little bit of a cheating one because I know quite a lot about Jack. But as a shot stopper, he's absolutely quality. Just needs to improve on his distribution. But that will come with time. That will come with development. As a more traditional goalkeeper, he's very, very good. I'd say exceptional at times. And one of many weird decisions that we made in the window, you'd say, sending a player that ultimately had to work so hard and really had to prove himself to be the number one Oxford in the first place, then got it, unluckily lost it over the summer, so the back end of, of last year sort of, you know, had a couple of mistakes and wasn't as comfortable and as confident as he was when he first uh, became that number one goalkeeper between the sticks. Ill has played quite a big part of that. He also got an injury as well, so there were lots of different variables as to why he did sort of drop off in form. And then we made the decision to sign Ed McGinty, another goalkeeper, young goalkeeper with, we believe, a lot of potential. Simon East with a very experienced uh, keeper, became number one. And then we had three goalkeepers and that sort of department was very, very stacked. Jack Stevens went out on loan and I just do look back now and I go, we probably should have gone with Ed McGinty going out on loan or, or something like that. I know Simon Eastwood is maybe coming as the end of his career um, soon. I believe the goalkeepers, obviously, they do sort of last longer than quite a few um, other positions. So you probably do see three or four years left in Eastwood. But I still think Jack Stevens is... I mean, he was linked to Aston Villa, you know, only six months, uh, 16 months ago, probably, you'd say, 12 months ago. Um, so... That that does seem quite bizarre, and I think he's a, 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 also made an appearance on the channel quite recently as well for the Christmas special. So he watches the podcast sometimes. He's a great lad. I'd go Jack Stevens at Port Vale, and I always sort of keep an eye on Port Vale. Brilliant win over Derby County recently, as well. So yeah, Jack Stevens is the player I've gone with as my favourite player at Port Vale at the moment. So for Fleetwood Town, I've gone with Brendan Wiradu. Hopefully that's how you pronounce his name. A brilliant defensive midfielder who showed his quality in League 2 for Colchester before a summer move. A physical but also quite technically gifted player at only 22 years of age, averaging 2.5 tackles per 90 in League 2 last year. He's already made appearances as Fleetwood's captain, showing his desire for responsibility and also his ceiling as a footballer as well. Brendan Wiradu is the player I've gone with as my favourite at Fleetwood Town. So for Charlton Athletic, I've gone with Raksaki. I sort of flirted between Lee Byrne and, in the end, Raksaki, a player on loan from Crystal Palace. I watched Lee Byrne play for Charlton against Exeter last night. Weirdly, how I ended up at that game. Um, it's local to me where I am now, so I sort of went down to sort of see what they're all about. Playing Exeter, of course, Oxford United uh, at the weekend. So a little bit of a scouting mission, you could say. Um, Lee Byrne scored in the game and did look really, really good. He's a real physical presence. We know that, Lee Byrne. You know, he was actually a handful when he played against Oxford uh, in that 1-1 draw a couple of 
of weeks ago. But Raksaki, the player I did go with in the end, is a brilliant young right winger who has such a bright future in the game. Very sought after by multiple League One clubs and championship clubs in the summer. 27 goal contributions in 37 games for the under-21s last season. I'll go with that again. 27 goal contributions in 37 games for under-21 academy football. And people will say academy football is very different to professional football. Of course it is. But again... Academy football, a lot of young talent. We know that the talent in these Premier League club, Crystal Palace is a Premier League club and the academies across um, all of those top division football clubs. To get 27 goal contributions is pretty impressive. Um, incredible, I'd say, when it comes to the stats there. So far, showing glimpses of quality and flair in a Charlton shirt. There is certainly more to come. I think we, when we watched him last night when he was playing against Exeter... You can see such a technical, skillful, exciting sort of off the off the chair type of player. When he gets onto the ball, everyone goes, "Wow, this this is going to be uh, most likely quite difficult to defend against." And he does give fullbacks a lot of terror. I'm sure we'll be breaking into the first team at Crystal Palace within the next couple of years. We know the desire for for Patrick Vieira to sort of get these young players involved. I think Raksaki won't be too far away. It's a brilliant opportunity for him to express himself. I think Raksaki is my favourite player at Charlton Athletic at the moment. I'd say because Lieberman also. So, of course, he's owned by Charles. That does sort of give him a sway there. But I had to go with Raksaki in the end. So for Lincoln City, I've gone with Jack Diamond on loan from Sunderland. Such a technically gifted player with a desire to create and score. Has experience in League 2, League 1 and the National League at only 22 years of age. Got a brilliant hat-trick against Bristol Rovers recently as well. He gets the fans off their seats. How he's not in that Sunderland squad or in contention in that Sunderland squad, I won't ever know. But Lincoln City, surely you'll take that. Jack Diamond, a little bit of a diamond for Lincoln so far. And I expect more to come. Jack Diamond is my favourite player at Lincoln City. So for Shrewsbury Town, I've gone with a centre-half, Shea Dunkley. All Oxford fans know about Shea Dunkley and the quality that he brings as a centre-back. He adds quality, but also a great personality to the squad. Started strong since his move from Sheffield Wednesday on a free transfer to Shrewsbury in the summer. If he stays fit, he's an outstanding League One defender. And like I say, his character doesn't go amiss either. Shea Dunkley is my favourite player at Shrewsbury Town. So for Exeter City, I've gone with Giovanni Brown, a player who is taking League One by storm so far and helping Exeter have such a strong start to the campaign. He's a goal scorer, but also a creator as well. 60 goal contributions during his time in League Two. So far, seven goals and five assists in League One. Those are some very, very impressive stats, especially for a side like Exeter, who, let's be honest, no one expects to be doing so well. Um, and Giovanni Brown's such a huge part of that. So I've gone with Giovanni Brown, my favourite player at Exeter City. So for Cambridge United, I'm going to go with Joe Ironside, the centre forward. Such an exceptional and another exceptional striker at this level. A key part of this Mark Bonnet system. He's the focal point and a key part of most things that Cambridge United do in the attacking phase. He provides quality in the air, but also a brilliant penalty box striker as well. He's played 109 games for Cambridge United, scoring 32 goals and creating 13 assists. The things I do to have a centre forward like Joe Ironside in this Oxford United team right now, unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'd love to have someone like that um, up front because we're, you know, we are lacking uh, that natural finisher and that also sort of physical presence. And Giant Side is both of those things. He's my favourite player at Cambridge United. So for Arkansas Stanley, I've gone with Sean McConville. He's one of the most consistent performers in League One and has been for quite a few years now. 33 years of age and last season played and started 45 games. That is unreal. Absolutely incredible. Last season, he registered four goals and 17 assists. He created 19 big chances across the campaign as well. And I believe he is a huge reason as to why Accrington constantly push above their weight. I've gone with Sean McConville. Who else but Sean McConville at Accrington Stanley as my favourite player there? So for Derby County, I've gone with Curtis Davis. This is a player who stuck with Derby through the struggles, the highs and the lows of the administration and relegation into League One. Over the course of his career, he's had a total transfer fee of over £19 million. He played at Luton, West Brom, Aston Villa, Leicester, Birmingham and Hull City. Some huge clubs in there. Brings great influence and experience and quality to every side he plays in. And still now, at 33, he's bringing all of that to Derby County. For me, uh, Curtis Davis is the player I've gone with as my favourite player at Pride Park. 
So for Peterborough United, I've gone with Johnson Clark Harris, another great striker in Skybet League One, an incredible goal scoring record wherever he goes and whichever league he's in, to be honest with you. 81 goals in his career in League One and 21 championship goals so far as well. He's won League One top goal scorer two seasons ago, nesting 31 goals in 45 games. 31 in 45, not a bad goal scoring record, I'll be honest with you. He's a physical presence and also the focal point for Peterborough United since he joined in 2020. Johnson Clark Harris is my favourite player at Peterborough United. So Bolton Wanderers are going to go with Connor Bradley, a young loanee from Liverpool who has slotted into this Bolton and Ian Everett system with absolute ease. First loans can be tough, but he's gone from strength to strength every single week. Already registered four goal contributions so far this year. Already a Northern Irish international as well at 19 years of age, showing great amounts of potential and development. But most importantly, quality as well. Does he get recorded in January? I mean, they need a right back, don't they? Trent is struggling, but I'm going to be hoping that does not happen. Happen. Let's wait and see. But Connor Bradley certainly is my favourite player at Bolton so far this season. So for Barnsley, I'm going to go with Nicky Cadden last season. Took League 2 by storm. Played a vital role in Forest Green Roses' promotion into this division. He finished with 18 goal contributions from left wing back. Playing a crucial role in defence and in attack. He to move to Barnsley in the summer and is slowly settling into new surroundings. I believe when the adjustment period is over, he's going to find the form of last year. And if he does that, Barnsley are going to be in for a treat. And Nicky Cadden is my favourite player at Barnsley. So for Pompey, I'm going to go with Connor Ogilvy. Not the most obvious shout, but certainly somebody who deserves a mention. He's got three goals in ten games so far from left back this season. A sensational work rate, quality going forward, and also averaging 1.6 tackles per 90. An all-round left back. He won't get all the plaudits, but he bloody deserves it. Connor Ogilvy is my player that I think is my favourite at Pompey. So for Sheffield Wednesday, I'm going to go with Barry Bannon, the talisman of Wednesday, some people would call him. He's been through thick and thin at that football club since he joined in 2015. He's made 322 appearances and 80 goal contributions during his time at the club. He already has seven goal contributions in 12 games this season. Last season, he finished with 21. Quite impressive for a 32-year-old who's played at a variety of clubs and leagues during his career. 291 championship appearances, 85 Premier League appearances and 57 League One appearances and counting so far as well. His loyalty speaks volume and shows a real desire to get Sheffield Wednesday back to the Championship. Will he do it? Will it happen this season? I have to find out. But Barry Banning is my favourite player at Sheffield Wednesday. So Ipswich, I'm going to go with Wes Burns, such an exciting player to watch, but I imagine not easy to defend against whatsoever. He possesses great pace, great dribbling ability, and also he's not a bad finisher either. His goal scoring output from right wing back last year was magnificent. Last season, he finished with 12 goals in total. His experience in League One is very impressive. 228 total games in this league, 60 goal contributions during his time as well. He also, I believe, won their player of the year last year. So Wes Burns... He's highly rated at Ipswich and certainly highly rated by me. He's my favourite player at Ipswich. Wes Burns, congratulations, young sir. So, Plymouth Argyle is the final team. I'm going to go with Bally Mumba on loan from Norwich City. This player absolutely tore Oxford United apart a few weeks ago. His pace, his directness as a wide man. He works a treat in this Stephen Shoe Macca side. His work rate is exceptional. He runs up and down that right-hand side just relentlessly really it's very very impressive two goals and two assists in 12 games so far this year he's averaging 2.1 tackles per 90 showing how all-rounded he is as a player great potential only 21 years of age Norwich City definitely one to keep an eye out for ripping up League One at the moment and Bally Mumba is my favourite player at Plymouth Argyle and that does wrap up this episode of the podcast this has been my favourite player from every single League One club hopefully you did enjoy it like I said at the start if you've got any other ideas different other concepts we could do do let me know in the comment section down below hopefully you did enjoy this one took a bit of time to research it and present it as well but hopefully you did like it and you did like the concept ultimately because if you did we'll do more let me know in the comment section down below leave a like and subscribe i've been jack and this has been the unfan podcast take care stay safe i'll see you very very soon take care